like uh, to uh, thank the Free Press Association for uh, your kind invitation here today in Copenhagen. I think that for Frank Van Ecke and myself it's a great honor and pleasure also to speak here at this uh, free speech meeting in Denmark. Denmark is a brave country. Denmark is also for us a symbol um, and an example for all freedom-loving Europeans. After the publication of the, the Mohammed cartoons by the newspaper Yale Post, I hope I pronounce it well, uh, when Denmark was under attack, when most uh, heads of state criticized Denmark, when Denmark faced an economical boycott and was threatened with terrorist attacks, the days had the guts to say, nuts, we don't capitulate. Democracy and freedom of speech are not for sale, and these values are far too important to be sacrificed to please the Islamic fundamentalists. From that moment, Denmark is, for the whole world, I think, a symbol of free speech, a symbol of resistance also against an ideology with theocratic ambitions, a symbol of our fight against the Islamization also of Europe. And, dear friends, uh, indeed, Islam does not tolerate any freedom of speech. For Islam, making individual choices is absolutely forbidden. In Islamic culture, there is no such thing as uh, freedom of choice. It is regarded as anti-Islamic. Islamic Islam dictates what a Muslim is allowed and not allowed uh, to do whom he may have contact with and whom not, and even who he may marry. Islamic jurists issue fatwas, the legal advices, which compri comprise all aspects of each Muslim's daily life. Criticism towards Islam is immediately regarded as a lack of respect for Islam. Criticism towards the Prophet Mohammed, as you well know here in Denmark, is regarded as a lack of respect for the Prophet and for Islam. In the Islamic world, any reformist criticism is practically impossible. And the divine Islamic law is eternal and unchangeable. Renovation, bida in Arabic, is unthinkable. And when a Muslim dares to turn his back on his religion, this will be regarded as the ultimate reason for which there is only one appropriate punishment, the death penalty. As a result, Islam is a fundamental negation, negation of humanism and enlightenment, hallmarks of our Western civilization. And dear friends, nevertheless, there are also the so-called Islamic Human Rights Treaties. And the most important one is the Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam, which dates back to August 1999. This declaration has been signed by the foreign ministers of the member states of uh, the OEC, the Organization of uh, Islamic Countries. And this international organization grouping all Islamic countries has been founded in 1973. But don't buy that nonsense when you have a closer look at the content of uh, this uh, Cairo Declaration. You will notice that it has nothing to do with human rights as we see that. Article 1 of the Cairo Declaration poses, quote, all human beings form one family whose members are united by submission to God and descend from <coughs> Adam, unquote. And the Declaration provides freedom of religion. But this freedom is nothing more than a one-way traffic. Only Muslims will be entitled to this freedom. And article, article 10 poses, quote, Islam is a religion of unspoiled nature. It is prohibited to exert any form of com compulsion on man or to exploit his poverty or ignorance in order to convert him to another religion or to atheism." Unquote. Article 22 of the Cahiers Declaration of the Treaty deals with freedom of speech. And the article poses, quote, everyone shall have the right to express his opinion freely in such manner as would not be contrary to the principles of the Sharia. Everyone shall have the right to advocate what is right and propagate what is good and to war against what is wrong and evil according to the norms of Islamic Sharia." Unquote. 
But for the sake of uh, completeness, Article 24, quote, all the rights and freedoms stipulated in this declaration are subject to the Islamic Sharia, unquote. So, Islamic Cairo Human Rights Declaration is uh, crystal clear. The Sharia prevails and all human rights are subordinated to it. And in August 2007, on a Congress, the well-known German Islam uh, professor Christine Schirmacher advanced, and I quote, since the origin of Islam in the 7th century, not even one Islamic state has granted it inhabitants freedom, equal rights, nor freedom of religion." Unquote. Even Turkey, which however is presented as a secular state, follows this Islamic interpretation of Western freedoms. Also in Turkey, so-called the bridge between East and West, freedom of speech is subordinate to Islam. As Danes you know better than I how Turkey has crossed the appointment of your Prime Minister Rasmussen a secretary general of the NATO recently because he has only defended the 2005 Mohammed cartoons of Kurt Westergaard in the name of freedom of speech. But dear friends, enough now about uh, Islam. Let's get back to the so-called free West and to the capital of Europe, Brussels. While in Brussels, the European capital, anyone can and may demonstrate. Uh, every year, no less than about 600 Demonstrations take place in Brussels, applied for or not. And the right to demonstrate in the streets of Brussels also holds for extremist uh, Muslims, illegal aliens, uh, and even for followers of all kinds of terrorist organizations. From demonstrations of this kind, the police mostly keeps distance because they do not intend to provoke, even when the demonstrators call for hatred, violence, or cause devastation along the track of the manifestation. On 11 September 2007, the organization Stop Islamization of Europe SEAL and the Vlaams Belang, political party uh, my colleague and myself represent, intended to hold a uh, commemoration of the victims of the attacks of 9-11-2001 in the United States of America. And although the applications for such manifestation are never rejected in Brussels, the major socialist, Freddy Tielemans, refused to give us permission for such a commemoration. And he substantiated the refusal by referring to the Ramadan, and I quote, to the Ramadan, the hateful and provocative character of the manifestation and the nearness of sensitive neighborhoods which would increase the chances, the chances for riots, unquote. What is possible for illegal aliens, foreigners who are breaking uh, the Belgian residence law for Islamic fundamentalists and supporters of all kinds of uh, terrorist organizations turned out to be impossible for people who represent a democratic party, who represents at this moment about 24% of the Flemish uh, uh, voters in a democratic uh, country. CEO and Vlaams Belang were not allowed to hold commemoration for the victims of 9-11 in Brussels. And a few hundred demonstrators negated the ban of the mayor of Brussels and held peaceful and serene vigil. But there was one thing they had not reckoned with. Brussels socialist mayor ordered the apprehension of all persons present, by which the police moreover proceeded in an unnecessarily violent way. And although the demonstrators were protesting peacefully, without any opponents around, so that there wasn't the slightest security problem. More than 150 respectable demonstrators were arrested like vulgar criminals. Policemen tried to prevent journalists from filming or photographing this event. Our member of the European Parliament, Frank van Ecken, who is present here today, was kicked and battered to the ground by police officers violently pushed into a police car and pulled from it again to be harshly flung to the ground again. Eventually, Frank was uh, thrown into a car, handcuffed like a nasty criminal. I was dragged from the television cameras while giving an interview, jumped by several police officers, 
kicked in the back and beat into a police assault car. Freedom uh, of speech in Belgium is a fundamental right, as it seems to be in every European and democratic country, but clearly not for people, even democratically elected members of parliament, who are critical towards Islam in Brussels. Not for people that want to commemorate the many thousands of victims of the bloodiest attack, terrorist attack in history. Not for people that want to vent their fear for the advance of political Islam in Europe. The major of Brussels called upon Yalabai. He needed to uphold public order and security and feared for rights and violence. But the only violence on the 11th of September in Brussels was displayed by the police on his order, on the order of the socialist mayor of Brussels. There wasn't even a demonstration nor a march. The only crime committed by the demonstrators was their presence on the Brussels Schumann Square in the shade of the symbol of European democracy, in the shade of European Parliament. And what happened that day was seldom seen. Democratically elected politicians, among whom even <coughs> A few European members of Parliament from France, like Carlo Lang, and Italy, Mario Borghesio, were cuffed, arrested, and thrown behind bars as if they were football hooligans or dangerous criminals. And dear friends, if Islam critical protesters and are treated and are treated that way in an Islamic country, no one will be amazed. But this commemoration did not take place in Tehran, in Cairo, or in Istanbul, but in Brussels, in the capital of Europe. And nowadays, Brussels apparently is regarded as a territory occupied by Muslims, on which Islam and its Quran are beyond all criticism, where extremist Muslims can do whatever they want, and people questioning this religion are silenced. This can be explained by the demographic evolution of my country and its capital, Brussels. At this very moment, more than 630,000 Muslims reside in Belgium. More than 250,000 of them live in Brussels, on a total population of about 1 million inhabitants. In 1960, the number of foreigners in Brussels still amounted to less than 10%. In the meantime, this number already amounts to 60%. In the meantime, also according to Sociological surveys already 25% of Brussels inhabitants. That's more than one out of four inhabitants of uh, the Belgium and European capital now is Muslim. And in the year 20, 2020, the foreign majority in Brussels will have increased to no less than 75%. In three communities near Brussels, Muslims already account for a main majority of the population. In communities like St. to Node, for example, no less than 70% of the inhabitants already are Muslims. And at the end of March, the American uh, channel, television channel Fox News, broadcasted uh, a commentary, a reportage on the Islamization of uh, Brussels, in which I got the chance to reveal the situation in Brussels. And as a result of this commentary, the TV squad of uh, Fox News visited the community Sintios to Node and Molenbeek, not far, only two, three kilometers away from uh, the city center of Brussels. And when the team returned in the afternoon, when the streets were already a little more crowded, some worried police officers advised them to stay in their cars for reasons of safety. Quote, it wasn't even dark yet, unquote one of uh, the reporters of Fox News commented during the reportage. And on its own website, Fox News, put it like this, quote, part of that fear stems from particularly nasty street crime, something that can happen in bad neighborhoods in any big European or American city. But parts of it is due to strong anti-Western sentiment among Belgium's Muslims which suggests that true integration is still a long way off." Unquote. Hence the conclusion of uh, Fox News after this uh, trip to uh, Molenbeek and Brussels. I quote, Brussels looks more like North Africa than the heart of Europe. Unquote. 
Well, dear friends, what's uh, the reason for prohibiting an uh, Islam critical manifestation in uh, Brussels? This simply happens because of the increasing electoral momentum of Brussels uh, Muslim community. No less than 11 out of 19 municipal councillors of the Socialist Party of Brussels, which is uh, also the party of uh, the mayor, are Muslim. Islam rules in Brussels, so to say. The major of the city is electorally indebted to the Muslim community, which is increasingly making its demands. Constantly, less uh, native Europeans are voting left. Socialism aims to survive by collaborating with Islam and in exchange for salvation, the left is willing to sell every European Europe stands for to Islam. And also our freedom of speech will be sacrificed by these Islamo-socialists. And the situation in Europe is of course not an isolated case in other European cities to the indigenous population is being replaced by a new, mostly Islamic population. In whole Europe, Islam is moving up and Western fundamental rights and freedoms, however the most important realization of our European civilization, are being brought down by policymakers out of electoral profit or to worry about upholding social peace or just out of multicultural foolishness. Dear friends, as a result of uh, the gradual Islamization of Europe, I have recently published an Islam critical book entitled Inch Allah? Question mark, the Islamization of Europe. And the Flemish and the Dutch press made a big fuss about it. Despite the fact that the book is in great demand, I haven't found any big publisher willing to distribute it. Moreover, the book has been boycotted by the foremost bookshops in Flanders, why? which simply refuse to sell the book. And because of my most recent release, journalists and commenters, commentators have poured out a stream of abuse upon me. In newspapers I have been called a fanatic, an instigator, a sinister individual, a madman foaming with anger, a racist, an agitator, and so on, and so on. Of course, these critics haven't read the book. Defaming the author's warning for the dangers of Islamization clearly fits into their strategy. Accuse a politician or an author of racism and xenophobia, and the whole debate is closed. And the idyllic multicultural picture of reality is correct. Insofar, Islam is depicted as a tolerant and peaceful religion which perfectly meets the European freedoms and human rights. The fact Islam really is fossilized and totalitarian religion being at odds with our freedom of speech, our democracy, with the equality of man and woman, and the separation of the church and the state can only undermine the picture of an harmonious multicultural society. Dear friends, once there was a time the progressive intellectuals turned round on rooted dogmas, clericalism, and religious fanatism. For political correctness sake, and out of fear for being obliged to admit the collapse of the multicultural model, they'd rather defend the Islamic theocracy. Just like the fools that believed in European communism with a human face, they now create the illusion of a European enlightened Islam corresponding to our European values. And the people that still dare to criticize Islam are labeled, labeled Islam, Islamophobic, by which Islamophobia act automatically is compared with racism. In an interview for the magazine The Jewish Weekly at the end of 2005, I answered the question whether Jews residing in Flanders and Morley in Antwerp, my hometown, where we have a very large Jewish community, should vote for a so-called xenophobic party. I told them, and I quote, xenophobia is not the right word. If you want to by any means attribute a certain phobia to me, let it be 
Islamophobia. Yes, I am afraid of Islam. Unquote. And this quote gained the Vlaams Belang, political party I represent, only criminal prosecution. My Islamophobia statement would be racist. Some political parties abused the quote and took to a procedure at the Council of State for depriving our party of its uh, state funds. And I do not feel intimidated. In my book I clearly state, and I quote, if a critical attitude towards Islam is regarded as Islamophobia, then Islamophobia is a duty for every European, unquote. Dear friends, our freedom of speech is not only threatened by the authorities, our freedom of speech is also threatened by the intimidation and the out outrage of adversaries <coughs> that get an open field from the authorities. The struggle against a party like uh, Vlaams Berlak and its alleged racism includes all means, even intimidation and violence. And at uh, the end of last year, a video clip of uh, a Flemish rap group called the Cicatrice, of which all members are uh, of foreign descent, uh, all members are, uh, of this group are Muslims, appeared on YouTube and also in the Belgian press. And the lyrics clearly called for my assassination. And I quote from the text, Bloody racist with your big mouth, you will die after a deadly shot. You will pay with your life for your statements. Well known, you will certainly become with a bullet, bullet in your head and you won't be able to do anything about it. It's time for riots, it's time for revolution. Death to Philip de Winter, and that's the word of cicatrice. I have prepared myself and I will not wait. I won't take, it won't take long till we get you. Shots in the dark, a knife in your back. Haven't you learned anything from Theo van Hoch and Pim Fortuyn? Unquote. After the song appeared on the internet and in the Belgian press, I filled a complaint against these rappers because of death threats and the incitement uh, of violence. But the complaint was uh, classified. And the newspapers even wrote, Philip de Winter, and I quote, Philip de Winter, magnifies the whole situation. Hip-hop is no uh, menacing speech, but a form of expression for uttering frustrations. Unquote. To silence uh, opponents of multicultural society and Islamic critical uh, people, all means are allowed. Also violence and threats included. Dear friends, all the violence committed against a party like Vlaams Berlak seems nothing compared to what happened in Germany last year. In September 2008, the German political party Pro Köln and the European organization Cities Against Islamization organized the Stop Islamization Congress in Köln. The Congress was prevented by an ultra-left, so-called anti-fascist demonstrators' street violence, including riots and vandalism and molesting participants uh, of the Congress. And these extremely violent left-wing fanatics did not know where to draw the line. The boat on which a uh, press conference took place, with the presence of uh, maybe 30, 40 journalists, was attacked and severely uh, damaged. Participants of the Congress were harassed with, uh, caused a lot of uh, injured. Our coaches were attacked and damaged. Countless objects were destroyed or put on fire. For 100 participants, among whom uh, the German member of parliament, Henry Nietzsche, a former member of the CDU, the Christian Democrat Party in uh, Germany. Several Austrian members of parliament of the FPÖ the members of European Parliament, Philip Kleis, Andreas Mölzer, Mario Borghesio, and myself were taken hostage at the airport of uh, Köln by the left-wing extremists. Eventually, the police proclaimed a state of emergency because of the extreme violence committed by uh, those left-wing protesters. And prior to the <coughs> pro Köln gathering, Fritz Scharma, the Christian Democrat Lord Mayor, of uh, Köln, has called on the people of uh, his city to show their intolerance, as he called it, of uh, his political adver adversaries in pro -Köln. 
a democratically elected opposition party who represents at this moment about 7-8% of uh, the voters in Cal. After um, thank you, the anti-fascist uh, text that uh, violently prevented the meeting from taking place, the major congratulated them, saying that the event has been, and I quote, a victory for the democracy and the democratic forces in his city, unquote. And the German and international uh, media turned a blind eye to the violence and the Nazi methods of the so-called anti-fascists, implicitly approving their behavior by branding the pro-cult people as far-right thugs and the thugs as ordinary people resisting Nazism. It is clear that defenders of Western freedom, including Jews, are demonized at the moment as Nazis, while Nazi methods are used to eliminate them. And the authorities, meanwhile, do not come to the aid of the victims because they are simply Nazis. On the contrary, sometimes the authorities even praise the aggressors for their vigilance and their intolerance in the fight against so-called Nazism. But dear friends, Islam doesn't tolerate any freedom of opinion. And fortified by its rapid demographic increase in Europe, it will be able to have its undemocratic values and standards sunk into our society. Mass immigration has become the Trojan horse of Islam in Europe. And the left is doing a big effort to flatter the gradually increasing Muslim electorate. It shouldn't be surprising that the main part of the Muslim community is voting left. In a city like Amsterdam, a recent survey uh, showed that about 90% of the Muslim voters are voting left. And however, the Muslim support for the left is utterly unnatural. The Muslims make the best of a bad job. It goes without saying it's all about uh, a strategic, strategic alliance. For radical Muslims, the parties on the left are just the means by which they will reach their goal. On the other hand, Muslims are the, no, the new socialist uh, voters whom the socialists aim to consolidate their power with. Progressives and Muslims also meet each other in their common resentment towards Israel and the United States of America. Hamas, Hezbollah and other extremist Islamic organizations represent a new kind of uh, anti-imperialism with uh, which the left also likes to identify itself. And hate against their <coughs> common, common enemies has united them both. The dogmas of multiculturalism <coughs> are imposed by the establishment to all Europeans. And restrictive laws are used in several countries, among which uh, mine, to silence people that criticize Islam. And also Heert Wilders was uh, put on trial in the Netherlands recently because of his film Fitna, would have incited, and I quote, hatred and discrimination against Muslims, unquote. According to the Dutch government, the film would have affected their religious dignity because it's an offensive towards the Quran, Allah, and Mohammed. <coughs> Fundamental freedoms are curtailed, not to protect our countries from the threat of Muslims, fundamentalism and terrorism, but to tackle so-called racists. Not the Muslim extremists should be dealt with, but Islamophobia and so-called racism. But dear friends, the ideology of multiculturalism has developed into a new religion with the equality and equivalence of cultures as its primary dogma. The European intellectual, political and social elite has been collectively lulled asleep by leftist multiculturalism. And this multiculturalism has undermined the combativeness of our European society. It has hollowed our the fundamentals of freedoms of our civilization, and it has affected democracy and freedom of speech. And the collaboration with Islam of a major part of the European intellectuals and cultural elite 
threatens to turn Europe into a kind of Eurabia in which Islam lays down the law to us. But dear friends, freedom of speech isn't some luxury that can be thrown aside at the first hint of offensive taken by religious groups. Freedom of speech is the keystone of Western civilization, of individuality, of scientific discovery, of wealth and of democracy. Without it, the entire edifice would collapse. Thank you for your kind invitation to your manifestation and long live a free and European Europe.